Welcome to the 121% podcast powered by Century 21 One Blue and the One Blue Real Estate School. Our show here is dedicated to helping agents and brokerages take their business to 121% through motivation, education, and action. My name is Kevin Johnson. I'm the CEO and managing broker. Hey, I'm Kevin Hatcher. I'm the chief success officer here. And down at the end, we have. Hey, guys, this is Daniel Rodriguez. I am marketing director here at Century 21 One Blue. Excellent. So we got a great show today for Okay, so before what? we start, uh-huh. yeah, first of all, uh, today is the third anniversary of becoming a Century 21 brokerage. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it is. congratulations. Thank you. It's It's Kevin. been a fun ride. It, I, I, it snuck up on me because yesterday I'm going like, wait, wait, it's June. Shoot, wait, tomorrow. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. It's been <laughs> three years since we made the change and... That's insane. It has been yeah. incredible. I mean, the growth we've experienced since then has been off the charts. And it's now just, you're it's number best decision. one, yeah, number one fastest growing agent count in Florida. Yeah, for that May. That blew my mind. We were uh, top 21 for last year. And then for May, within the month, uh, ranked number 13 in Florida. I mean, number 13 in the world and number one in Florida. That's, yeah, that's baby. insane. And I was <laughs> Good reflecting job, Gavin. On that. High five. <laughs> oh, mate. I was reflecting on that yesterday, just thinking about that, about the process. And and I have a question. I, I know that I'm going to divert a little bit from the topic that we had scheduled mm-hmm. so for today. We're not <laughs> so we're you, you, yeah, all, you I, I, forget I, the topic. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. a really okay. important question. Why not? Yeah, let's <laughs> just start this. My show notes. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, let's do it. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Not I was, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is a non-rehearsed, non-thought-through podcast. <laughs> we are not responsible for what happens from this forward. If you dislike this show, please email daniel at c211blue.com. Okay, go ahead. Okay, now I feel the pressure. So <laughs> if, it, if it is a bad question... Uh, dun. I, yeah, See, now we need a button. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, taking into account all this process and uh, and the success that that this brokerage brokerage has had, um, I was thinking like, if you were to start all over again, if you were to do it all over again and start again, and knowing where you are right now, knowing everything that you know right now, <laughs> is there anything that you would do differently? Would I hire Gavin? <laughs> 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 okay, cut. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I definitely, there would be a lot of things I do differently. What about you? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, you go first. I mean, well, you live, you learn. Yeah. It's it's one of those things. I think, yeah, uh, uh, we've talked about it in other podcasts. And Daniel, you know how much he loves unrehearsed stuff, right? So this, well, should, yeah. this should be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going off script, not my. <laughs> it's I mean, always kind of dangerous. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, obviously, from the other podcast, you know that I came from a bartending background and a dancing background before that. But I had it, it was the thing. I had a lot of customers at, at the at the restaurant Santiago's Bodega, um, telling me that I should get into real estate, and I didn't listen to them. I didn't listen to them for a couple of years. Wow, that long? Yeah, I didn't know it was that long. No, it was a couple yeah. of years. So it wasn't they that were, months. Oh yeah, no, it was, no, it wasn't I'm like learning. they were like you know, it wasn't like they were kind of like, hey, you should get into real estate. And the next month, I went, okay. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it took me a little while. I mean, when you're working in a restaurant, though, you got that that easy cash in hand, that that money at the end of the night. You you know, you're not worrying about it. You just you know, working shift to shift. So, I never really, I I never really listened to them and really took that seriously. I never never thought I could do it. You mm-hmm. know, I was just like, really. I have to do a whole exam and things like that. Mm. So, um, <laughs> so you you would listen to them sooner. Yes, I would have listened to them a lot sooner. Got into real estate a lot sooner, and I would have uh, when I passed my exam, I would have shopped around a lot more for brokerages. What do you mean? I would have I would have shopped around just to do my due diligence to see what everybody could offer me to find out what was working for you know different agents and what they were looking for in their careers you know uh, how did they start out how do what did they need when they were starting out I I had no idea what I needed mm-hmm. I didn't know until I didn't know you know until I got to the point where I'm like hang on you know and I saw saw the difference between where I was and where I could be mm-hmm. um, I love you, you always tell me I didn't know what I didn't know yeah. Uh huh. And yeah, and I I came here for you know I'm 45, and then realized, oh okay, I could be getting all this, you know, with the technology and the support, and so yeah, I think if 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 I had to do it all again, I definitely shop around and maybe think I I don't know maybe look into what really really matters to me, what really matters to me as an agent, what I'm gonna need, what is my motivation as well, what what gets me 
from you know from A to B. What what really what what's my why? What's your why? <laughs> you know so. Um, yeah, so I think I would have uh, basically shopped around a lot more, maybe uh, taken my time a little bit more in the beginning, just choosing a brokerage and just thinking about, you know, what I needed and maybe asking a lot more questions. You know. What type of questions would you have asked? I mean, I mean so I mean, for those who remember, you kind of mm. went with a friend, right? It's like, yeah. hey, mm-hmm. independent boutique with a friend. It was easy. It was easy just to do that. It was, it was a natural kind of like, well, I can just, you, you know, I... Because you didn't know what you didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't know. So didn't I, know just, what to ask. I, I didn't shop around. I didn't go to any other brokerages. I didn't interview anywhere else. I just literally went, oh, okay, you got a brokerage. I'll just go there. You know, that, that seems like fun. You know, without really, you know. <laughs> that sounds, that, 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 the British accent just makes it <laughs> so much. That sounds like fun. Well, it did. It sounded like it sounded like a good laugh. So I was like, like, okay, well, I can have fun. Because that's your number one quality when searching for a brokerage. Where will you exactly. get the good laugh? <laughs> <laughs> and who knew? <laughs> and here hey, you like, get better laughs. I like to have fun when I work, all right? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we know. Uh-huh. That's important. <laughs> it but is. Yeah, 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 you enjoy going to work. Yeah, exactly. you got to enjoy what you do every day. And, and for me, it was, you know, I've never been a, a nine to five until now. Um, but I've never been. A <laughs> I've you never volunteered. been. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I've never been that guy to really. I've always, you know, when I was dancing, I was doing. You know, my timetable was all over the place. My schedule was all all over the place. Um, so I never really had a set schedule. And then when I was bartending, you know, I'd have some day shifts, some night shifts. Um, you know, I was that was all over the place as well. So there was mm-hmm. never any, you know, set regularity to what I was doing. So when you get into real estate. You need to, you know, you need to plan your days. You need to make sure that you're being productive every single day. You need to make sure that you're uh, time blocking. That's going to be a tactical tips. <laughs> All right. Listen out for that one. Um, you know, you need to make sure you're doing things like the, the, the things you don't know, you know, that I've now, obviously now I've joined the brokerage. Now I've learned these things and okay, yeah, that, that's going to help me. That's going to, and I had no idea about these things in the beginning. And I didn't, I made the mistake of just going where it was easy. Did you know about those things before making the transition? Or was it once you made the transition, you learned about time blocking and all that? Once I made the transition. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I didn't, I, I didn't really know yeah. at the time. I, I, you know, I wasn't getting a, as much support as I wanted. Don't get me wrong. You know, uh, it's a successful brokerage. Yep. And, you know, those guys are great. It just wasn't working for me. It's what, not what I needed as a new agent. Right. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Anything else you'd do differently? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, and and even if even if you were, for example, let's say if we could go back in time, and to the to the time where you were dancing and performing, do you think you would actually, if knowing what you know now, mm-hmm. would you go dual career on that one? Nah, no? just would have done the dancing. <laughs> <laughs> You couldn't do a dual career with you, that because you, you were on ships re- and stuff. And because I was everywhere. I was all over on the tour, world. I was on tour. I was over the world. I was on ships. I was, you never know what you're doing day to day. You're in a, you're in a studio shooting a video all day or you're, you know, you're going off and doing a, you know, arena tour or something like that. So I never really, I could never have done real estate at the same time as that. Okay. But um, cool. I wish I'd started earlier. Definitely. I wish when I'd moved to Orlando. Um, I just got straight into real estate. I wish I'd just got straight into it then and I could have been, you know, maybe seven, eight years ahead of the ahead of the game right now. Quick side tangent, like not deep dive on this, but why mm-hmm. did you give up dancing? I got old. <laughs> Let's <laughs> simple as that. <laughs> I got old. I never well, I never really um had the um I never really wanted to teach I you know, not dancing anyway. Um I, I just enjoyed going out and performing and, you know, that lifestyle. Um, and I think I just got to an. I mean, I'm 44 now, you are. and I stopped dancing. I think when I was around 34 ish, or th- you know. Yeah, I was so, just curious. Like I never asked you that question before. Well, it's aches and pains. Your body starts giving out on you, even at that age. I wouldn't know. And, I'm, yeah. I'm still 29. <laughs> yeah, and you've been holding. 29 for a few years now. Shh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no. It was it was a simple kind of hey, you know, you can't dance forever. You can't do this career forever. That should be a song. Mm-hmm. You can't dance forever. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a song title. No, you can do real estate forever. True. Well, mm-hmm. so, yeah. well pretty well. Yeah. Bill proves that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, I couldn't dance forever, and I realized I needed to make a change. Plus, you know, got married, moved to this country, and I was like, well, 
you know, I, I should maybe start a new career, new country, new career, new new everything. New just wife, new country, new career. Exactly. Just, just new life. Mm-hmm. reboot. Uh-huh. And it's obviously, you know, I went into the easy, I, I was good with customer service. I used to, um, I managed a bar in the UK, um, you know, so I was into bar management and everything. Mm-hmm. So the natural c- progression was just to, you know, get into the scene over here, which I did and was sex- successful doing that. And then go into real estate. But as I said, I wish I'd done it earlier. I wish, knowing what I know now, I wish I got into real estate straight away. You know, it's funny because we were talking about yesterday, you know, there's another agent that started roughly around the same time you did within a few months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That agent's struggling Mm -hmm. and you've had immense success. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting to see the the same tools, the same resources, the same everything, Mm -hmm. how you were able to be successful being dual career for the first more than half of that, Mm -hmm. you know, attending VAR. And then towards the end, before we made the transition to the, to the corporate life. It ain't easy. You know, it was easy, but to show the path that, you know, everybody can have the same toolbox. It's kind of off topic, I guess. Back to what we were supposed to be talking about. But whatever about that, you yeah, know. Yeah, we went off that way yeah. ages um, ago. This guy's fault. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> so we'll deal with that later. Um, but, you know, you can have the, everybody can have the same toolbox. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's, do you pick up the tools and use them? And are you using the right tools for the right job? Exactly. That is what makes the di- oh, that's powerful. That's what <laughs> makes the big difference, right? Mm-hmm. And when you're not successful, it's typically because you've wake- you've woken up every morning and made a decision to make excuses and not make money. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. No, this is great. A great opportunity to get to know you. And uh, in your case, Kevin, the is there anything that you would do differently? Knowing so what you know I've now. been still working on the hiring Gavin decision, trying to evaluate. <laughs> no. Can we cut this bit out? Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> if, if I have to go off script, hey, we're going on. off script. You Number know? one growth in Florida right now. Come on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I would say yes. So I always say I started out with Century 21. That's not entirely true. For about two weeks, I was with a independent brokerage. And it was because of... Uh, I made I made that transition from timeshare doing that for a couple months because I just wanted to give it a try. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought about that and, at one point as well. <laughs> coming from the hospitality industry, you know, vacation homes are huge here in Central Florida. They actually account for more tourism tax dollars than hotels do. Mm-hmm. So I went with one of the larger uh, vacation home brokerages and management companies in town. And I started there. And I'm like, eh, i never forget I was out at an event and met – one of my friends who was a Century 21 broker. And he's like, hey, I saw you got your license on Facebook. I'm like, yeah, I did. He's like, where are you at? I'm like, you know, ex-brokerage. He goes, who? I'm like, echo when I said the name. He goes, no, I heard you. Just who the hell are they? Mm-hmm. You know, and so <laughs> I went and met with him. Uh, and that so that would be my first thing is going as a new agent, going with a major brand. The, the second thing I would say I would do differently is um, going back to I didn't know what I didn't know just like you, that broker was a good friend, or so I thought. Um, he's a competing broker, mm-hmm. meaning when, when for newer agents if, or you're getting into this business, your broker is either competing or non-competing. Non-competing means their whole focus is serving their agents. They don't actively sell. They're not actively promoting. They may work their own friends and, and referrals, which is fine, but they're not actually marketing and promoting themselves to attract new consumers. This particular broker was, and at my very first listing appointment, which was a ref- a friend of a friend, so I got the referral in. I was so excited. It was actually a really nice house. I went to this broker and said, help me, right? Mm-hmm. And he helped me prepare a listing presentation, and then he helped me lose the listing because he called and set an appointment right behind me and pitched <sighs> the, hey, you know, uh, he's new. I'm his broker. Hire me, and I'll, I'll let him work it with me. So you'll still have Kevin – and he'll learn and be able to do it, and you'll have a, the broker as well. And it was then that I, I called another um, broker that I had not met at an event, and it was another Century 21 broker, and they had been actively trying to get me to switch. So I packed my stuff and went, and I was there until the very end when we made the, the move to go independent. So mm-hmm. I would definitely find out whether they're, com- you know, I wouldn't go to a competing brokerage. No. I don't want I don't want the person that's supposed to help me grow my business still deals. be my competitor. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's crazy. That, that was a I mean, I'm, I'm, I the 
99.9999999% of brokers would never do that, mm-hmm. right? So that was, a, I'm not trying to, you know, slam competing brokers. There are some great competing brokers out there. Just that's not something I would do over again. The flip side of that is, you know, when we f- I first got started, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I, I went all in. Uh, and it was a big risk. I mean, today, Kevin might not make that same decision because I'm a little bit more uh, reserved on my risk taking sometimes, but I, I literally quit a six figure job and said, okay, let's do this with savings and Amex. And <laughs> uh, Oh God, I better hope. And thank God it did. I mean, I closed over a hundred thousand in commissions in my first 90 days. So mm-hmm. the end result was good. Um, I got a little crazy. I mean, getting that much money that fast, I did a little bit stupid spending. I probably would have, uh, done a little bit, smarter spending i would have done the same yeah most people would right (laughs) i i I can't so probably a little bit smarter spending um but no i mean i from that point on um when we opened the brokerage you know as i told the story in episode one i wanted to be a century i wanted to go from being a centurion producing agent to being a century 21 broker owner and due to the great policies of not pillaging and plundering uh, we had to go independent um, and we went independent as a hundred percent brokerage. I probably would not have done that over again. It was my lack in confidence in would a would a top producing agent in the market want to come work for a brand new no name? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, if I can just give them, you know, a hundred percent, would that work? And I, I probably wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Um, and I probably would have been a little bit more persistent in choosing and chasing Century Twenty One. Um, I didn't chase them. Thankfully, they called me in April you. of 18 <laughs> when I got the phone call. Actually, he came here. Rick Ellis came to visit. i never forget I was in, in your office. It wasn't your office at the time. Mm-hmm. And I heard at the front, you know, it's Rick Ellis from Realty. is Kevin here. I'm like, oh, I want to talk to him. I gave him the grand tour. Um, and I said, imagine all this could have been Century 21. He goes, that's what I'm here to talk about. You know, would you, you know, basically the short of the conversation was, would you join the brand? And best decision ever. So, I mean, really going look back and looking at what I do over again. Yeah, I mean, not uh, going straight in working for a major brand. And, and, and the main point of that is being independent for those first couple weeks, I, I lost valuable time. Mm-hmm. And it showed that once I made that switch to Century 21, being brand new in this business, I was able to take off like a rocket ship because I had that Century 21 name behind me. Yeah. And in all fairness, that's going to be Century 21, Remax, Cobalt Banker, any of the big global brands, right? Um, Keller Williams, to a certain degree, has that, but because uh, they're they're expanding globally. But I'm talking about the major brands, the legacy brands, the brands that have been around for decades, mm-hmm. that are known, liked, and trusted by consumers. That yeah. their name is synonymous with real estate. That is who you should work for. And keep in mind, too, as a new agent, that every Century 21 is independent. And and most, all the brands, right? They're all independently owned and operated. So when it comes to, like, the Rilogy brands are a bit different from some of the other ones. It's a completely different culture. Office, everything. You have the system tools, the system logos, the system marks and stuff. But my first two Century 21s could not have been more different I mean, you would, you other than Century Twenty One being right before their DBA, mm-hmm. not the same company. I mean, it was, gotcha. it was, mm-hmm. and and I will say we are completely different than those two brokerages. Mm-hmm. I took my learnings from those two to try to create here and create a better environment for everyone. Like you know, going back at what were my pain points? Yeah. Having a good website, having a good CRM system, market email marketing, text marketing marketing support and creating images and stuff. And my goal has always been to help solve all those pain points in our offering and our value prop. Mm Yeah. You know, and yeah, I think we'd be much more successful knowing what I know now too, because, you know, we had learning curves in the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. And we still learn there. I mean, there's things I, I, we do a survey uh, twice a year with the agents, the big one in January, uh, July, August, we do a little bit smaller one just to check to see, but After the January one, we make changes. Mm -hmm. We say, what do our agents like, don't like? What are they using? Right, Because they could say they like it, but if they're not using it, then why are we paying for it? Could we take that money and put it to something else that they say they need that we don't have? So I would 
be able to take almost five years of learning, <laughs> right? And just skip all that. Mm-hmm. And when we open the doors, straight into it. Oh, but without those experiences at the other brokerages, you wouldn't be who you yeah. are, right? Well, yeah. Right. No, I'm yeah. talking. No, I'm talking about in yeah. the, when, we, when I opened One Blue. Mm-hmm. When we were One Blue Real Estate in 2016. Yeah. Right. Knowing everything I know now as being a broker for five years, right? That'd have been cool. Like just to skip all those. Yeah. Learning curves, oh, yeah. right? Exactly. I would have gone Boomtown day one. Yeah. For one, I'll tell you that right now. If you're not on Boomtown, uh, you, why? Um, mm-hmm. Call me. I will screen share with you. Connect with Kevin.com and you can schedule an appointment. I will be happy to show you why I am so passionate about Boomtown, why it is the, the best in the market for real estate agents. Um, Boomtown would have been number one. I actually built my own site because I was all about, I have to be independent from my broker. I don't want my broker to own this, right? <laughs> and, you know, I learned quickly that, you know, why spend money when the broker, if the broker's offering a great tool, mm-hmm. leverage the broker's tool. It saves you money. Yeah. And if you ever want to leave, that's fine. People get divorced and agents leave brokerages. It happens. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure your brokerage has in the contract that you're going to be able to take your business with you, take your leads with you. We put that in writing, no ifs, ands, or buts. So, yeah, that's what... Uh, really, mm-hmm. really interesting, especially for young real estate agents that yeah. are starting mm-hmm. right now. And there's there's one code that I have, like, for everything that I do in my life, I I think my biggest fear in life is having regrets. Yeah. Like, being on my deathbed, looking bad, looking back to everything that I've done, and be like, what, like, now I regret all, all my life, or I regret X or Y decision. Or I regret not having that experience, like, mm-hmm. not... Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, or, or not doing what I really wanted to do, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe I was working on a job that I... I really didn't care much, and I wanted to be a real estate agent all my life. I never took that that step because mm-hmm. of fear or frustration, or maybe I think that I'm not good enough for it. And that's when you have to think if you're going to be regretting that decision 20 years from now. I celebrate mm-hmm. failure. Yeah, I have yeah. failed many times. I was homeless when I was 18, you know, to where I am now. Um, yeah, I made bad decisions, you know. Mm-hmm. Coming to Orlando from Louisiana was a was a huge like oh my god money shock. I lived uh-huh. in my my 1990 Toyota Corolla. Oof. I slept in the Epcot Cast Center parking lot, uh-huh. and I don't know if they still have them now, but as an, a Disney cast member, they had showers and because you would back then every day you would show up in street clothes, check out a mm-hmm. costume, mm-hmm. go to your locker, change, and go. So there was always a place for you to to uh, uh, to change. That's why I showered and changed there. Um, and that was for several months as I, you know, I made some bad decisions, but I wasn't giving up. I was not going to go back home to Louisiana and, you know, to all the people that said you're making a bad decision and let them think they were right. That was exactly. not yeah. freaking happening. Not Hell happen. no. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I look back and, you know, someone asked me once, do I, do I regret any of those decisions? And I'm like, you know, not really, mm-hmm. you know, Conventional logic would say, well, go back and redo it and not make the bad decisions. But then who would I be today if I didn't go through the struggles and the hardships? Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't regret. And that's something that is really important. Some people are not willing to take a risk. Right. So what is the balance? How can you find balance between like I need to make um, a reasonable logic decision versus I got to take a risk. Yeah. It, right. It's gut. Mm-hmm. You've got to make the leap. You've got to be prepared to fail. You, you have to say, I go into something like, if I fail, it's okay. Like when I went for my instructor exam, there's uh, like 300 something thousand licensees and there's like less than a thousand active instructors. I think it's like 700 and something change right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the hardest exam there is. Or I would say it has the lowest pass rate. I want to say it's the hardest exam. It's the lowest pass rate of all the exams that they give in the division of real estate. Like at that point, it was like 7% pass rate. Wow. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go in. I just passed my broker's test. So I'm like, might as well. It's just a little bit harder of a broker ver- you know, kind of test. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to fail it. <laughs> I just want to kind of get the – I want to see what the test is like because there's no class. There's no book. It's just you know it or you don't know it. Right. So I just want to go in and try. And so when I walked out, I was walking up to the counter – and the lady, you know, they give you the paper. If it's, you know, face down, one page you passed, two pages you failed. I'm like, how bad did I do? She goes, you passed. I'm like, what? 
She goes, no, you passed. How many times did you take you? I'm like, first try. Nice. And she's like, mm-hmm. really? We, we've never had someone first try at this office. I'm like, yeah, I didn't even study. And I'm not saying it's to be braggadocious. It was that because I didn't care, because I was like, hey, if I fail, I'm okay. I wasn't stressed about failing. I wasn't yeah. worried. Oh, my God. If mm-hmm. I fail, it's going to be the end of the world, right? And that's what so many people worry about. You know, once you've been homeless, nothing else matters. You know where the bottom is, <laughs> right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. so I agree. relative, I was like, yeah, you know, and went in there. I mean, just I was relaxed. I, did, I mean, because I was intending to fail. I mean, it was almost like a matter of pride. Uh, how low was my <laughs> score going to be, right? Like, and so yeah. when, and when you pass, they don't tell you the score, which then really pissed me off. Like, really, did uh, yeah, I get I a seventy-five well. or did I get a hundred or what? You know. Mm-hmm. So, there's that. So. Okay. Really interesting, guys. Do you think that you'll have any regrets now, for anything? I have no you? regrets. No, no regrets. No. What about mm-hmm. you, Gavin? No, nope, don't think so. No, no it, 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 your your experiences shape you into where you you know into what you are today. Yep. So you have to, like Kevin says, you have to celebrate the failures mm-hmm. and mo- learn from them, move on, makes you stronger, makes you better. What um, doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Oh, God, he's oh sorry. Now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yep. really, mm-hmm. really there are videos on the internet. <laughs> Let's not. D- don't even <laughs> plug those while we're on here. Yeah, Sweet no, Caroline, no, no. Uh-huh. Rising oh. Star. I had a mosh pit going on. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> And last Why? question, I don't know. guys. I have one last question. <laughs> All right, so one last question. Okay. So we're, we're already done what? Okay. This, this off script stuff's like kind of stressing me out. <laughs> me too. I don't know. Sometimes it's go. We have this plan, to wing it. <laughs> <laughs> We got to make this fresh. We're going to have a discussion after this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that I know that experience, now that I know the things that you would do differently, now that you're right here, looking back to five years ago, 10 years ago, were you projecting that you were going to be the person that you are right now? I mean, er, we all have <laughs> goals, right? And dreams and we like- That's, that's a multi-part question that could yeah. be its own podcast right now. <laughs> so right. for example, me, I, I have the vision of, or at least I dream, I dream to be one person 10 years from now, right? Time has passed. So, not a lot in your case. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, but like, for us dinosaurs, yeah. I think yeah. you called dinosaurs. Us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in ep- episode one. Are you right now close to be the person you wanted <laughs> to be a few years ago? I feel a few years ago, or okay, yeah. So, this is an interesting topic because, and like I said, it could be its own podcast. Uh-huh. I, I do a lot of volunteering with the Boys and Girls Club, and one of the things we try to do is is bring in business leaders, or you know, or you know, people who've been successful in life, whether it be politics or business or whatever. And one of the things they do, especially for the young girls at the club, is that, you know, kids grow up and they, I want to be a firefighter. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a senator. I want to be, you know, all the, a doctor. And we asked the, the speaker, what, when you were a kid in high school, or what did you want to be? What did you, what was your dream of what you wanted to be when you grew up? And, it was, it's never what they are. And, and the more of the story that, you know, it's okay that dreams can change. Dream, dreams evolve based on our experiences and, and, and where life has taken us. And as we go through life's journey, our goals can change. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. I, I, I wanted to be an attorney. I never did it. I moved to some, I, I came down for grad night to Disney. And I remember... We went back right in high school. We had our, uh, our, um, our, our graduation party thing they had there. And there was a big map of the country. I said, where do you think you're going to be in one year? Go put your name on this map. And I had never thought about it. And I walked up to the map and I said, okay, first criteria, it has to be above sea level. Like, I don't really want to look up at the ships. Like in New Orleans, I want to look down at ships. So that was criteria one. I said, I'm going to Orlando. Why? I don't know. And graduated, and it was, so that was May, the following April, and I'd been, uh, actually I think it was McDonald's manager, um, and I went to the, uh, saw a commercial on, for working at Disney. Don't ask me why I picked up the phone, called it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, yes, great. Um, phone interview was done that night. Like, literally, it's so like, saw the commercial, and to the phone interview were a couple hours. 
And then they're like, okay, so would you, can you come down for an interview? I'm like, sure, when? Um, day after tomorrow at this time? I'm like, sure. I hung up, like, okay, how am I getting there? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I called my friend, we drove overnight, came down to you know Florida, and I started working for Disney. And that changed my that changed course, right? That may put me in the hospitality space where a 17 year hospitality career developed, rising through the ranks. They worked at Disney, guest relations, guest uh, concierge, and uh, guest services at the hotels. Started out in food and beverage, you know, <laughs> electric <laughs> umbrella. It's not there anymore at Epcot. Um, but you know, after 17 years in the hospitality business, I got tired, and. So my goal had always been to kind of rise in the ranks at Hilton Corporate, maybe own a hotel. Like, so for 17 years, I was working towards that goal. And then one day I said, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I want to be in real estate. Actually, I want to be a real estate agent and make the change. And it was right at the peak of, the re uh, of right before the recession. And then it collapsed. And I'm like, probably not a good time no, to do timing. this. Mm -hmm. Stayed in hotels. Um, and I'm glad I did. Had some great experiences and then made the decision in actually 2014. And then, uh, but I knew at that point I wanted to own a brokerage. And matter of fact, my very first broker, that competing one, stopped by to say hi. He was in the area a couple weeks ago. And then he said, you know what? The first time I met you and we talked about your real estate career, you said you were going to be a broker and you were going to do it in two years. And damn, you did. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I forgot I said that. But I, I put it out there and I made it happen. I mean, just the other day, I, we have a goal to be what's called the 2100 Club. Yep. Century 21. So to help hold me to that, I sent an email to the CEO, to the VP of the region, to our exec. Oh, I know. You yeah, copied me yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah. Like, hey, this <laughs> is our BHAG, big, hairy, audacious goal. Uh -huh. So yeah. long-winded answer, but yeah, life changes are uh, where at. So two years ago, or, or, or when I got my license and started real estate, I am where... I said I was going to be, but probably not where I actually thought in my head I was going to be because I don't think, I, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm being, you know, I'm being a little, you know, bragging. I, I never thought I would actually be running a Century 21 brokerage and have the agent count that mm -hmm. we have and the consistency in our agent count and the growth that we're experiencing now, especially come last year. You know, what March of last year, I thought oh, it's going to collapse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what about you? I'm talking too much. I need water. Yep. Right there. Let's start talking. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I never really had a plan. I had no plan. <laughs> so I, I'm just, when I was a kid, I got into dancing. I It was fun. It meant I didn't have to do schoolwork, you know, as much. So, you know, which I hated. Um, I was more the, you know, arty kind of like travely, you know, get out there and have fun type, you know, yeah. which I... You know, I, I danced, you know, when I was a kid, then I started making money dancing and that was just blew my mind because I was like, you know, doing a big arena. money? <laughs> doing something no, I like to do? Crazy, right? <laughs> so, you know, I'm doing arena tours at, you know, Wembley and the O2 Arena in the UK. I'm traveling around the world and I'm like, I'm making money for this. I had to pinch myself sometimes. And dating a pop star? Uh, that was way back. <laughs> um, we, <yeah. laughs> we have video. <laughs> but um, so it's... Roll the clap. No. Yeah, so basically, I never really had a plan. Never really had a plan. Never really. I just kind of got into different. I did what I enjoyed. Let's put it that way. I did what I was enjoying doing. And, and if the money came with it, great. You know, and I, I you know, I, I never uh, lived to work. I worked to live. You know, so it was, that was my whole thing. As long as I'm enjoying what I'm doing and it pays the bills and... Y you know, I'm having fun fun while I'm doing it, then great, let's do this. I never wanted to be in something I didn't enjoy doing. And that's kind of what steered me, I suppose, through life. Um, and, yeah, I did the dance. I thinking that stuff. song from Wicked, Dancing Through Life. Like, mm -hmm. that's like your theme song. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Well, that was it. I mean, I never really – I did the bartending thing because I, I was – I mean, I like people, and it was fun. It was cash. And it was cash. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the drunker they get, the bigger the tips. And, and believe it or not, now I've got into this business. Obviously, the people I used to get drunk on the other side of the bar, I'm now selling houses for them. You know. So, <laughs> you know, it all works. Well, so um, they trust you with their alcohol. They'll trust you with their house. The moral of today's story. <laughs> Tip of they the day. Trust me with their car keys so they couldn't drive home. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I never really. Oh, so you took their house key off while you had them. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, exactly. you need a new house? Okay, I got you. I got you. I'll get your house key. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I never really, I, I don't know. There wasn't, for me, there wasn't a master plan. There was a, 
I'm going to do what I enjoy doing. I can't believe that. Mm -hmm. You can. I know. I bet you can. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, guys. So, yeah. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. Did, did your goal, your dream? Yeah, mm -hmm. buddy. Uh, so yeah. I'm going. Flip the script. <laughs> <laughs> since, you, <laughs> <laughs> since you left high school last year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you were still in high school. Uh, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> still, I just got. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what's the question? What same well, same to you. Like, are you same where you, you thought you would be? I know the answer, but. You know, two years ago, three years ago, five years, I mean, you where you thought you would be. I, well, for you, when you were 18, because that's only a couple years ago. It's, yeah. it's, it's funny because, yeah, I, 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 I finished, um, where, when, when was that? Okay, so, yeah, I finished high school, like, when I was 15. What? Mm? Uh-huh. That's different. <laughs> you, yeah. you're a freaking. Dude, I left high school when I was 16. Wait, time. It's different. In different countries, right? <laughs> Is that normal, the age in, in Colombia? No, no, but, it, but it's not normal. Yeah. What, what's the normal graduating there other, age? There are other countries well, they kicked, out there. They kicked you out, so. <laughs> like, they're like 17. Like okay, at so 17, it's still early. Uh, so I, I was pretty early. Now, did you leave, or did you, like. No, 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 you I finished. Just, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Then I started college, and I was doing political science. I, Dude, you house are here. Yeah, but oh. I mean, it's like, I always knew this was the goal. You Your know, goal was to be a media uh, director at a real estate company. To be a media director. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that part just like <laughs> evolved a little bit. But if I, uh, and th that is something that is, and for, for young um, like entrepreneurs or people that are just trying to find their, their big why or, or their passion, I think that's, that's, it's important to see themselves, to project themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Being happy. And that that is something like it's what what you're doing is pretty it's it's key because I also only do what I enjoy. I'm mm -hmm. always doing like filmmaking, marketing. That is my thing, and you're never going to find me doing something different because I know that I would just not take it. Like mm -hmm. I, it's just like I don't have the spirit for it, mm -hmm. you know. So right now, I uh, I am where I want it to be. And beyond, I'm. Um, I think, and it's just like it's been hard work. It's been uh, being just giving that that uh, twenty one percent extra. Twenty one. Yeah, no. But oh, but twenty one. I mean, yeah. yeah, that twenty one percent. Extra. That, uh, everyone gives the hundred percent. Every like, well. <laughs> on average, everyone tries. Everyone you know? aspires like, to. Yeah. yeah. It, mm. Everyone aspires to just uh, when when they um, I don't know send a proposal. They always give their hundred percent, right? Uh, but uh, it's the ones that give that twenty-one percent that actually make it. Mm -hmm. The twenty-one percent separates the ordinary from the, the extraordinary. extraordinary. Uh, <laughs> that's what sets you apart, and people feel it. And that's that's when you go beyond your expectations and become the person that you wanted to be. And Matthew, you know, uh, Matthew McConaughey once said, like. I don't have a hero. I'm my hero. Mm -hmm. Like the me from 30 years from now is my hero. The me from 10 years from now is, is that's the person I want to be. I don't want to be this person. Or, no, that's the person that I'm following. And then I'm going to follow myself in 20 years. Yeah. So it's just like a constant chase. And that but means But you need to say it with purpose. the accent. You need to say it with that McConaughey accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not the same. <laughs> that's, that's not the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Um, um, I think that's finding purpose, and I'm pretty happy where I am right now. I have. You're a good storyteller. Yeah. You're a good storyteller, and I think you know for mm -hmm. someone who is going to do filming or that kind of stuff, you have to to be successful to be a storyteller. Anyone can shoot video. Anyone can edit video. It's doing it with with purpose and cr we, you know creating that story, f but just envisioning what the story is from start to finish. You made a comment one day about how you enjoyed shooting, you do our listing photos and, and video, and you enjoyed, and you did that before freelance for a different company, but now you enjoyed it more because you had in your head, once you got to the house, how things were going to flow, and you're able to pull it together that way where before it's like, go snap some photos, go snap some video, and send it off for them to edit. Here you're, you're, you're storytelling and you're planning that. So that's what makes you so extraordinary in what you do. Um, you're, you're definitely a perfectionist, you know, you know, we, we had to work more on the, uh, quantity over 
you know, quality or it's better done than perfect. I, mm-hmm. I, I love that saying. <laughs> um, but no, you're an amazing storyteller and you're passionate about it. If you weren't passionate about it, if it wasn't who you are, if it wasn't your in your spirit, as you said, mm. it, it it wouldn't come through. Yeah, totally. And 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 as a just a, 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 I wanted to throw this question from the beginning, just thinking about this process. It's uh, three years now, and I'm sure there are young real estate agents right now having these questions and looking up to you guys, uh, just wondering if if like what's their story going to be. I think he right. just called us old again. He did. No, ex- but with a compliment this time. Experience. It was a, it was a backhanded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It, it was better, much <laughs> more improved over dinosaurs. I, know, I like that one. You yeah. know, I was like, I break through that seriousness <laughs> with some fun. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Experienced. Experienced. So thank you for sharing that. I'm sure that people listening to you are learning. and Hopefully. Just... They Hopefully they're listening. They will. <laughs> exactly. And then they're listening, will go with nice. learning, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Please listen. I mean. Thank you so much for answering those questions. Yeah. I mean, it was an interesting topic, taking us completely off script. But, hey, you know. We've got another podcast now <laughs> that we haven't filmed. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I mean, it works. So, was anything else? No. No? I'm, I'm satisfied. Okay. I'm <laughs> well, then my day is complete. I mean, Daniel's satisfied. We're uh-huh. good. We're good. Right. That's what's <laughs> most, most important. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for watching on YouTube, listening on podcast. If you enjoyed our show, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and also click the bell if you'd like to be notified of our new videos. If you really enjoyed this video, please, please, please do us that huge favor. Smash the like button to help out the YouTube algorithm. If you're listening on your favorite podcast app, please consider leaving us that five-star review. Um, and if you enjoyed the show, it's a 121% podcast. If you didn't enjoy this show, this is the ABCs of building houses. So you can go <laughs> leave a review over there. Um, just saying. Anyway, hope you. Anyway, as we always say, go out there and be extraordinary. And no matter what, every day, make sure that you're giving it 121%.